Good morning, friends. Today's topic is desire to be desireless. So the reading was wonderful, and the song where desire strengthens to become temptation, how it causes havoc in our life, and remedy was also said by Thomas Akempi, the famous writer of the Imitation of Christ, that. Remedy is in humility and in faith in God and God's power and God's love for us. If we pray and hold on to Him, we will conquer temptation. Not with arrogance, but with humility. When Sri Ramakrishna said that Mahamaya is to be propitiated, she is to be adored and worshipped, and prayed that, Mother, please step aside so can I can see the face of truth. It's almost the same thing in this different language. When a person in Isha Upanishad, the last verse, it says, O oh son, you have covered the truth with your brilliant orb. Please reduce your rays so that I can see the face of truth. It's also the same thing. That ignorance covers our nature and we are unable to, to know that how happy and blissful we are if we could be freed from that ignorance. And you know that desire, the root God of desire is ignorance. Ignorance of what? It's not, not knowing the thing that we want to possess or we want to enjoy, but not knowing what we are we are. That is the main reason. Now let us see, there is something being taught about desire to become desireless. We know Holy Mother said, if you become desireless this moment, you are freed. So our bond is, our absence of freedom is because of the fetters of desire. That is true. Nirvashana Holi Mukti Mother too. It's like Sri Ramakrishna also said, when you have many thorns break your leg, your foot, how will you get rid of pain while walking you feel pain? Oh, there are thorns in your leg. So you procure another bigger, stronger thorn and with that thorn, we bring out the thorn that, that have entered into your body. So, desire to be desireless is like that. Then what do you do after you have taken out the thorn? Do you keep the big thorn in your hand still? No. You throw all the thorns. Purpose is done. So, the difference with the thorn that we possess and the thorn that have entered into our body is, the thorn in our hand doesn't give us pain. It is under our control. I can throw it any moment. And that thorn helps to bring out the thorn that I've entered into my feet. So in the same way, one desire, one strong desire has to be developed that I want to be free from all desires. But is it possible to be free from desires? Have no desire at all? No, it is not possible. It is not possible. If we have body, we are living, we will have desires. Bad desires and good desires. Selfish desires and unselfish desires. Now, what desires are to be removed and what we ultimately want to gain? Ultimately, we want to gain freedom from all desires. Freedom, total freedom from ignorance. Total freedom from suffering. suffering. If we are very ignorant, we will suffer a lot. We are little ignorant, we will suffer a little bit. Still suffering will be there. So we want to be free from all ignorance so that we are totally free. To be free from ignorance is to be free from desire. According to Vedanta, man is not just a bundle of flesh, blood and bones coupled with mind. Man is not merely a body-mind complex, but essentially he is divine. 
of the nature of infinite knowledge and infinite joy. That is our very nature. Ignorance of his true nature is the cause of his suffering. Now, this ignorance of our true nature as Atma, or the spirit, is called avidya. Avidya means lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge of what? Not knowledge of the world, knowledge of our own self. That is called avidya in technical term of Vedanta. This avidya, because we forget ourselves and we consider something else, this body and mind, and we, we identify with this, this very ignorance of ourself and misidentification of ourselves with something else which we are not, causes desire. This very fact, as soon as we feel I am a body and I am a mind, then desire enters. Avidya leads to Kama. Kama means desire. Intense desire, all sorts of desire can be called Kama. Lust, greed, all those desires are we can call karma. Karma is intense and passionate desire for any enjoyment, any possession. So, avidya leads to karma. Now, karma leads to what? When you have desire, what do we do? We want to possess that, we want to enjoy that, so we have to act for that. It leads to karma. All done in a selfish way. Avidya to karma to karma. That is the common sequence of happening in the world. All our works, actions in the world are prompted by desires. If we have no desire, there will be no work. A robber goes and robs in a house prompted by desire. A person goes to a suffering man to give him succor and hope. That is also prompted by desire. But two desires are different. One is selfless, united with other person, giving more, leading him towards more unity of with, the, with, with all others. The first example was more dividing, separating his, his joy and not my joy. In the second case, other person's peace is my peace. So both are prompted by desires, but one is very evil desire, another is good desire. So ultimately this good desire also is the bondage, final history we say. So should we not do good to the world? Yes, we, sh we should do good to the world, but till we do good to the world just for the sake of doing good without any knowledge about ourselves, we cannot really do good to the world because it will be prompted not by mere will to do good to that person, but there will be a subtle desire for name and fame. Oh, that person, people will say, how great is this person? So that will create a bondage. So this desire for name very subtly inside, seemingly that person is doing good work in helping other person, in giving money in charity, in serving others, but inside there is a danger of desire for name and fame. If that desire is there, then there is bondage, there is no freedom, and with bondage comes suffering. As soon as I do some good work with desire for my name and fame, there is every chance that not everyone will appreciate. Somebody will be jealous, someone will criticize, oh that person went there, but he or she didn't do good service to that person, only she stayed for one hour and came away. And that was person was suffering. And here that you were being, being despised, being not honored, not, not, not praised, your brother blamed for not doing well. So that may cause you great suffering. So why this suffering? Again ignorance. Ignorance of why we do it, who we are, what do we, what I want by doing that. I didn't, if I do not expect any praise and just do 
to make that person happy without anything for me in return. No one can make me unhappy. Someone will criticize, but I have achieved the goal by making a sick person happy for some time. That time I could give to him or her. So, I am satisfied in my work and I have done good work because I don't expect. So, this expectation, this desire for name and fame is a bondage. What are the real desires we generally have for what we work? The gross desires, Vedanta says, are of three types. There are many types. Gross, very strong desires are three types. One is called Vitteshana, desire for wealth, for possession, to become rich, to possess all the good things and best things in, the, in life, whatever are seen, we want to possess, thinking that that will make us happy. Happiness is the goal that motivates in our world. So, Vittayshana is one. Then comes Lokeshana. Only possessing and becoming rich doesn't make really us happy. So, what do we want? We want to have name and fame. Lokeshana, from the praise from the people. People will be around me. They will sing my glories. My name will be broadcasted, telecast in television and printed in newspaper. That becomes another desire. It is called location of the praise for recognition from people that becomes second great desire for human beings that is desire prompts i will get nobel prize what for nobel prize not that you want to do, achieve research something that you can the use of the humanity gets well and is benefited you want to get your name in the history that itself is location that is also second strong desire and the third strong desire is Uttrayshana, desire for progeny. Man thinks, woman thinks, what will happen if after I die, I want to survive? So, desire for children. That is the third very strong desire. Prompted by the desires, human being work. Now, Arjuna asked Krishna, under what compulsion does man commit sin? This thing, if we are not very moral and ethical, we are very strongly rooted in, 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 in our qualities, in dharma, then every chance that we will commit some mistake, some sin. And people have been seen committing so much mistake. You are reading that uh, how much corruption goes on, you, you, you get the news from India, how much corruption goes on in this. What is behind that? If you see the root cause behind corruption is greed, and greed is nothing but desire to become rich, even at the cost of giving bad name to the country. People do that. What is that? Under what compulsion people commit sin? Sri Arjuna asked Krishna, it is not today only, it has been for ages, it is a truth in the world that people are greedy, they are desirous, and prompted by that they commit sin. Sri Krishna said, Kama Esha, Krodha Esha, Rajo Guna Samudra. Mahasano, Mahapapma, Vidhenam, Yavarinam. People are as if being pulled to commit something that they should not do. What makes them do? Sri Krishna said, psychologically speaking, it is two things Kama and Krodha. Strong temptation and anger. Temptation and anger are like twin brothers. They go together. You have strong desire, if it is not successful, then anger comes in anything. Then, Mahashano Mahapapma. It is both spring from Rajas, these are our enemies. All devouring and cause of all sin. The all sins arise from karma or temptation or strong desires for enjoyment and possession. That is the thing Krishna says. And he says, this has to be taken care of. If you do not take care of karma and krodha and somehow comes lobha in it and it becomes a fine path leading to hell you will fall down in hell with the gate made of these three things. 
सो टेक केयर ऑफ दिस जही शत्रु महाबाहो काम रूपम दुरासदम दिस वेरी डिवोडिंग दिस एनिमी इज कमिंग टू यू एंड देर फोर यू कॉन्कर दिस जही शत्रु महाबाहो माइटी आर्म वन कॉन्कर दिस एनिमी कॉल कामा desires selfish desires desire to enjoy and possess the things and thinking that enjoyment will come by possession happiness will come by enjoyment this wrong notion you have to clear how to clear that is the problem how to get rid of desires for acquiring things possessing items and for sense desire for sense pleasures how to conquer that without desires we are free from avidya and we are brahman self fulfilled nothing we need we are complete we are absolute we have everything nothing needs to be gained suppose a person has a million dollars will he want to be a millionaire he won't be because he is already millionaire so we are like that we have everything that we seek outside we have that joy already in us but that is hidden somehow we are not getting access to the joy because of ignorance covering of the ignorance the cloud and then we are trying to seek that joy in the thing somewhere else instead of seeking it at the right place we think that if i bring some nice tv plasma tv i'll be very happy but where does it happen when you bring a tv some 24 inches big it comes so oh, there is 36 inches this 42 inches bigger and bigger you bring one day see nice next day you find go to a neighbor's place it's a very big plasma tv and next day you don't want to see even a tv what to do this i want bigger one so this is for everything there is no end to this from mazda to toyota crown to mercedes to bmw to rolls royce there is no end even if you possess rolls royce you are not happy that doesn't give you satisfaction if i could have a small plane that type of desires are never ending so we need to train our mind with the help of our intellect intellect has to be purified there has to be understanding in the intellect that where to stop how much do i need difference between need and greed unless we are able to know our need and are motivated by our greed then it's difficult without desire we are brahman we are god we are perfect we are free we are happiest once sadhu had written on his kutia rishikesh in hindi is written chah chamari juhari ati nichan ki nich it is the chah is desire in hindi who desire you are rat you are you are very low caste chamari chuhadi ati niche you are lowliest and the lowly so whatever language you could get to denounce this chah this desire he has written a chart for chah chamari chuhadi ati niche na ki niche main to puran brahm tha जो तू न होती बीच आई वॉज परफेक्ट ब्राह्मण इफ यू हैव नॉट कम टू मी स्टिल समथिंग लिंगर्स ऑल आवर स्पिरिचुअल प्रैक्टिस एंटी वी रियलाइज गॉड इज टू प्यूरिफाई आवर माइंड फ्रॉम वॉट फ्रॉम डिजायर्स वेर फ्रॉम दी डिजायर्स कम दैट इज वन प्रॉब्लम हाउ दे कम दे कम श्योरली फ्रॉम द एक्सपीरियंस somewhere somehow we have experience otherwise how will have desires if we have never flown flown in the plane and never uh, seen a pilot flying you never have a desire to fly a plane or on a plane because you have never seen that you don't know its utilization nothing so because you have experience something the desire may come so desire comes from experience experience in this life not only that experience in previous life something we had already experienced we don't know and that experience is there in a very subtle form 
कौन संस्कार है टेंडेंसी इंक्लिनेशन इन आवर माइंड दैट गोर्स टू हैव दैट एक्सपीरियंस अगेन दैट संस्कार इन आवर माइंड बिकॉज वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग वेन वी सी द ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ डिजायर इन फ्रंट ऑफ आईज वेन यू गो टू द शॉप एंड I might have a desire to have some sweet thing or some sour thing, whatever I like, and I go to the shop and I see that. Then this samskara and then the thing seen, perceived, they couple together and becomes very strong in our mind. Now, when this becomes strong, will power is supposed to control that? No, you should not have that. There is no joy. Will power is not strong. It gives us to the desire of the mind, and then you go and start procuring that and devouring something or purchasing something or doing something that you should not have done, because will power was not strong by the practice of discrimination. You are not a strong understanding. Buddhi was weak. That's what Sri Krishna said in the Gita. Take refuge in Buddhi. Buddhau sharana man vichya. In this discriminating power, make your will power strong, understanding strong. What should I do and what should I not do? Where is real happiness and where is not? What is the real thing to be done and what is not to be done? Make that thing strong by purifying your mind and having greater control of your buddhi over your mind. Otherwise, there is suffering. Buddha started his journey for truth with very compassionate heart. He saw there is a lot of suffering in the world, and he thought, "Is there any way to get rid of suffering? How people suffer?" Sri Ramakrishna also had the same feeling. He was going, moving in Calcutta, and saw through the window of his horse carriage, and he was so sad. He says. People moving in Calcutta, then all their mind is on belly. They just want to eat something, enjoy something, and are quite unaware of the great joy that is hidden in their heart. No search for this happiness, for this bliss, and seeking little, small pleasures and enjoyment. And he said, how to get, how to make them know. And this was in his mind when he said to Holy Mother. People of Calcutta are suffering so much, and you say you will not do anything for them because you are a woman. You will have to do much more than what I have done. Buddha also saw people suffering, and he set out to find: Is there a way out to 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 get rid of suffering? Then he sat on meditation, left his home and heart and kingdom, all enjoyments. He had to find the way. If there is, he did not know if there is way or not. But he saw a sannyasi who was very happy. He was all unhappy people. Sannyasi seemed to be happy and free. Though, though there are some sannyasis who are not, who are still suffering, they might have something, some other thing. But he luckily found a sannyasi who has achieved something. Sannyasi is also a human being like we all. They are in different grade of realization of self or the spiritual attainment. Not that all have attained God or are free from all desires and perfected, but they are striving to attain perfection. Some are at the first step, some are very tall. So, Buddha, by luckily, saw some sannyasi who had reached the goal, and he was very happy and peaceful, and he is very content and so that he had achieved. And then he knew that there must be some way. Then he meditated, found the truth, attained nirvana, and then went to Saranath and said, "Listen, there is suffering. You cannot say there is no suffering. You just experience. No suffering is the truth of the creation of this world. Every human being suffers, but there is a cause for suffering. That the suffering is in their nature." There is something that is added that has made you suffer. Some external cause that is added, and that is creating suffering in the human mind. And he said the third law. He said that suffering can be removed. You 
you can get rid of suffering. Three very important laws. And fourth law, how to get rid of suffering. What did he say? The cause of suffering? He said the second law said, there is a cause of suffering. And for the cause of suffering he said, it is tanha. Tanha is desire. The cause of suffering is desire. Buddha also said the same thing as Sri Krishna had said many years before him. That desire leads you to bondage and suffering. Desires are unquenchable. So many things of enjoyment, so many things to possess, and in the same proportion there is innumerable desires. And it is not that, oh, I want to have a nice ice cream, mm, you like a drumstick, I can dust, whatever. So if I eat, oh, I will be satisfied. The problem with desire is, this satisfaction comes for a very short time. And the, and the psychoanalyst of the satisfaction of desire, they say, your desire was satisfied by not, mm, you are not happy by eating ice cream. You had a desire to eat ice cream, and you had ice cream and now you feel happy and satisfied. It was not the ice cream that gave you satisfaction, it was the cessation of desire to have ice cream that gave you satisfaction. It is desire who torments us, who gives us suffering, and if desire is taken away somehow, then we are peaceful. Two ways to be peaceful then. Either fulfill your desire, or do not desire at all. The same case will be there. If you don't have desire to have hagen dust, you are as happy as a person who was desiring and somehow he got it. The problem with the person who has, uh, ate ice cream and was happy is that for some time he will be satisfied. But after of next day again there will be desire. I said a very simple example of ice cream. There are desires for many bigger things which we cannot really, every day we, we hear in Canada, we can have every day one ice cream. We can watch this that. But there are desires which cannot be satisfied every day. One after another, another comes. There was one king called Ahyati. He was enjoying the world, being a king, and he had everything in his possession, all objects of enjoyment, whatever he needed. Suddenly what happened, one day he did something to a rishi, and he cursed him, get old. And immediately that young, youthful king became old. His senses became weak, not able to desire, but mind has a desire. The thing, the problem is, maybe the senses grow weak, but mind wants to desire. That they say about the ghost. The problem with the ghost is, they have no senses as such active senses, but their mind is there and the desire they have before their death, that lingers. I want to have that, I want to meet that, I want to possess that. That is there. And until that he is freed from that desires, he suffers a lot. Because he doesn't have physical form by which he could enjoy. But mind is there. According to Hindi philosophy, the Jivatma has the mind and also senses but without sense of sense organs. So now this mind torments him very much. So that's why the prayer by his relatives, may he get liberated from his desires. May he get get to go to heaven, may he get to go to other body, or may he get liberation. That is a prayer for Shraddha ceremony, they say. So these desires without having sense organs, this was great for this king. Suddenly he began. Then he caught hold of Rishi, I, I, I'm sorry, in the, my ignorance I did something to you, please don't give this curse to me, I am just, I am just, I was you, before you cursed me, I have a great desire to enjoy the world. The Rishi was compassionate and he said, What I have cursed you, I cannot take back. I cannot make you youth just now, because I have said that you will become old. But there is a way out, because you have prayed for me. If anyone is there who can exchange his youth with your old age, then he will become youth. Yet he comes home and says this dilemma to his family members. And he had young sons. One of his sons said, Father, you are my dad. My duty is to serve you any, anyway. So I am ready to exchange my youth 
with your old age. Ceremony was done and that very moment when Sankalpa was done, the king Yayati became young again, his son became old. Yayati had a new lease of life, of enjoyment. Again, he indulged in all the enjoyments of the senses, of the possession, everything. And gradually he became gradually old, naturally this time. After he was old, he finds his desires for enjoyment have not reduced at all. The whole life he enjoyed this world. Then senses came to him. Wisdom rose to him. He said, it was wrong, my wrong idea that I can fulfill desire by enjoying the things. It cannot be. Desires are not fulfilled by fulfilling, by enjoying the things. And he wrote beautiful couplet, Na jatu kama kama nam na shamati. This kama desire is never fulfilled by enjoying the objects of desire. It is like Habishat Krishna Vartmeva Bhuya Eva Vibhardati. It is like trying to satisfy fire with ghee, clarified butter. You put ghee, fire burns, it likes ghee. You want to satisfy fire with ghee. One pudding, not one spoon, put ten spoon. It might be one day satisfied. No. You cannot quench the thirst of fire for ghee by pouring ghee into it. It will want more and more. Like that is desire. So, these desires are dangerous. As it has been said in our reading from uh, Imitation of Christ, that desires are need to be controlled at the outset. And they go on increasing and becoming stronger if we give them a lease. Shankaracharya said very nice thing for this. It is like rolling a ball from the steps, from the ladder, on the ladder. So ball when it starts rolling, it is slow movement, it falls one step. Then it gets momentum and strength and force and falls faster and faster as it goes down. Similar is our desire. If we cannot control it at the beginning, it will be difficult to control and it advances. So it needs to be controlled at the beginning. Sri Krishna said, the desires come from just a wish, dhyayato vishayan punsa. Just you had a wish, imagination. Vishayan punsa, sangaste shupajayate, attachment comes. Sangat sanjayate come. Little samskaras have come, then you have started imagination. Then imagining becomes stronger and becomes kama, sanja, sangat sanjayate kama. Then becomes kama, intense desire. Kama, krodho vijayate. Now from kama, when the strong desire is stronger, every chance, when the desire is not fulfilled, you will become angry. Krodha bhavati samoha. When anger comes, then person's this discriminating faculty goes. The human being is set aside and something else takes its possession. The man is not man, the woman is not woman. He or she is an angry person. The anger has take, robbed him of his real nature, of his intelligence, of his mm, discriminating power, of his willpower. So he is temporarily insane. Krodhat Bhavati Sammoha is deluded. Sammohat Smriti Vibrahma. Now there is a loss of memory. The memory, what should be done and what should not be done, that is lost. He can do anything. Smriti prangshat buddhi nasuro. Now when this memory of his discriminating power gone, then his intellect is lost. Buddhi nasat When there is no intellect to guide you, then buddhi nasat pranasati. So it starts from, this destruction or ruin starts from small desires. Desires cause bondage and bondage definitely misery whereas freedom is joy. Bondage is at multiple level. First, the great longing and restlessness to possess an object of desire. We become restless, we lose our peace of mind. When we want to possess something, then the thing is, in that attempt, we are going to lose our peace of mind. And that brings us bound and unhappy. Seeking happiness, we fall into a ditch of unhappiness. One, not only that, 
once experienced, that mind wants to repeat that experience. Want a, and not only that, wants a higher person. They say that uh, there are people who smoke him. So after him, they go to OPM, after APM, they're strong, strong heroine. And they say, I don't know if it's truth or not, they say there are people who are not even intoxicated by even heroin or all that. They want some, some snakes having small poison and ask them to bite them. Maybe story. But, but uh, the poison, the snake bites in the tongue and then feel all oh, that. They feel the, what, the kick. They feel the kick. <laughs> so like that higher and higher, desire, is, wish, desire for enjoyment comes. Simple is, you have, and this advertisement is all based on this psychology of human being. People want more and more, and they will show in a different way. And how that telephone, this phone came iPhone, so nice, you scroll, this, that. Then people bought iPhone. You say, iPhone 3G version. Oh, you can click a camera and take a film. This is not good. This 3G, I should call it. Desire came. Now, after 3G, in one year, they say, 3G is not good. More, more features. Now, 4G. No end to that. Now, 4G. You can take this camera, this photo, this, that. So, if we are not able to control our desires and see nothing is there in the ads. When we see ads and are prompted by and motivated by the ads, they, are, they, they generally want us to make fool. And if we give to them, we prove that we are really fool. So we should be very careful about these ads, which is based on the weakness of human being of having desires. When we realize that desires are the cause of our bondage and misery, they rob us of our freedom, then we seek desirelessness. Shankara said that of the three great qualities a human being has is Manushyatva, Mumukshyatva, Mahapurusha Samsraya and that has been obtained by the grace of God. Manushyatva is man's human qualities, Mumukshyatva is desire for freedom. That is desire, to become desireless. That Shankara also has said, that is a great quality that a human being can have only by the grace of God. Then how to become desireless? Sri Krishna says, control your senses at the outset and kill this destroyer of knowledge and realization. Jahi Shatrum Mahabaho Kamarupam Durashadam This Jnana Vijnana Nashanam which robs us of Jnana and Vijnana and knowledge and realization, be strong and control that. The second is strengthen your willpower. Train your will. Say to your mind again and again what is right and what is wrong. And don't give up your will to act for the right thing. By practicing we our willpower increases. Seek the higher self is another one. They say that we have sense and Gita says. Senses are higher than the body. Mind is higher, superior to the senses. Buddhi is superior to the mind. And what is most superior is Atma. Indriyani paranyahu indriyevya paramana. Manasastu para buddhi yo buddhe paratastu sa. That Atma is highest. Seek that. And Atma is the most powerful thing. Identify yourself with that power. When you identify yourself with the Atma, which is most powerful, then what you say, you know, like Swami Vivekananda, you say, Kurmas Taraka Charvanam Tribhuvanam Utpata Yami Bala. Small temptations want to weaken me? I am Atma. I am all powerful. I can chew, catch and chew all the stars in the sky. I can set apart this Tribhuvan. I have so much of power. A man of realization of Atma. He says, Atma is so powerful. It is a little allegory to say how powerful a human being is. How can he be tempted by small desires? And another is faith in God's name. That whenever we are tempted, run to God and pray. Faith in when God's name will save. Sri Ramakrishna said, you don't have to worry and think much about this temptation. Turn them. You have lust, anger, greed, turn them towards God. 
and it will be a positive effect from negative to positive. It is very difficult to get rid of desires and calm and growth and overma. Turn them. If you want to possess something, why don't you want to possess God? If you want to be angry, be angry with God. Why is that revealing to you? Why still there are so many desires lurking in you? Get angry on God. That's what Sri Ramakrishna said, and that's what Raja Yoga also said. Vitarka Vadhani Pratipaksha Bhavanam. Sri Ramakrishna also said, when you go to God with such good intentions that I want to be free from desires, I want to be pure minded, I want to be serviceful for my for, for humanity. I want to we get rid of desire for name and fame. When you go to God with one step, God comes ten steps towards you and will hold you, you with his hand. And when you are with God, you are all powerful and all good. Once one person used to visit ill places. So he came to Sri Ramakrishna repenting that I can't get rid of this desire. Surya Mitra, you can read in Daily with God. There Sri Ramakrishna says, don't worry. Why don't you take Holy Divine Mother with you, Mother Kali with you when you go. So wherever you go, take Mother Kali with you. And that acted well and he gave up all these ill habits and he became very pure and good person. Girish Ghosh was a drunkard, we all know. So Sri Ramakrishna didn't say, give up desire for drinking. He cannot. He is bound by desire. He said, Girish, why don't you offer this to Divine Mother before drinking? Mother, please take this and bless it, make it, make it, make it sacrament. Wine can become sacrament. It becomes prasad. And with that attitude, Girish Ghosh started Having that, slowly it became reduced, more love for God came, and the wine was left aside, God came to position. Now, instead of desire for drinking wine, desire for having Mother Kali, awareness of presence of Mother Kali was more. Now, the intoxication was in the name of Mother Kali. That happens when a person mm, turns his desires towards God, tries to associate God with everything. Sri Ramakrishna is to offer everything to God. Whenever he ate, once somebody brought him some bitter leaves, Sri Ramakrishna said, I can eat some, eat somebody had already taken. So that, that host says, what if, what if somebody had taken here and it's fresh, nothing happened? And Sri Ramakrishna said, you see, I offer everything before eating, I offer to God. And I cannot offer something which has been taken by somebody else. So this habit of associating God in everything, and saying every word to offer to God, Sri Krishna Pranamas to like that, offer all the fruits of this action to God. So that become makes us associated with God. The more we are with God, the more away we are from desires and temptations. So I read from an article concluding. Desires in consonance with dharma are perfectly acceptable for a righteous life in the world. Dharma abhiruddho bhuteshu kamosmi bhartasabha. I have a desire, Sri Krishna says. God is a desire unopposed to dharma. Righteous word. That is also godly. And that will gradually take us to desirelessness. If we act in a righteous manner, we will finally become free from desires. But if our goal is God-realization, only desirelessness can lead to it. Nay, desirelessness is synonymous with the state of God-realization. For, according to Vedanta, a knower of Brahman becomes Brahman, and there is no second entity for him to desire. Disciplining the sensory system, training the mind, faith in God's name, Prayer and meditation and selfless work are some potent means to help us in our journey towards getting free from desire. So that one desire, we need to possess all desire, we need to culminate in that, the desire for, to become desireless. Then we'll be free and we can really serve 
people without any desire for selfishness or name and fame and no one can rob us 